The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. In the recent movie, The Jesus Revolution, what was the saving message of Lonnie Frisbee's gospel? What was the Jesus movement like in the early 70s? And what happened to Lonnie Frisbee after the early 70s? Hi and welcome to Grace in Focus, the radio and podcast ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. We are glad you are with us today for a fairly interesting Q&A discussion. If you want to know more about the Grace Evangelical Society, join us on our website, faithalone.org. You will see a lot about our resources and articles and our magazine called Grace in Focus and our online seminary. That's at faithalone.org. Now with today's Q&A discussion... Here are Ken Yates and Bob Wilton. Welcome to another episode of Grace and Focus. And Bob, I know sometimes we banter back and forth, but we got a question from Mike, and I'm just going to confess right from the very beginning, this is going to be 99% on you because he talks about the movie, The Jesus Revolution. Yeah. And I have not seen it, but he specifically wants to know what you and others think Plus, he talks about something that happened in the 60s, and I was too young for that. And since you're a lot older, <laughs> since you're a lot older than I am, you'll be the resident expert. But anyway, he talks about this movie, uh, The Jesus Revolution, and he says he mentions one of the people that are involved in it, a guy named Lonnie Frisbee. Yes. And uh, maybe you can tell us a little about them. But anyway... He he says that he heard back in 1969, so I was pretty young back then, this man, Lonnie Frisbee, give the gospel, and here's what he says, and he's quoting. Lonnie Frisbee said, Jesus died for our sins, but I need you to stand up, walk forward, come up here on stage, and receive the Holy Spirit. Now, I I was too young, and I don't know Lonnie Frisbee, but I know that's a bunch of gobbledygook yeah. right there that, oh, my goodness, where does that come from? All kinds of work. And then he says, Frisbee later stated that those who accepted Christ would need to, quote, unquote, give up sinning as a condition for salvation. So I know you've seen the Jesus Revolution, and obviously, if, and whatever part he played in it, he's obviously a works-based, back then in right. 1969, a works-based gospel presenter. So the question here is, what do you think of the Jesus Revolution, and what light can yeah. you shed on this for people who would be interested in maybe watching this? Yes, I, I wrote a blog about three or four months ago when it first came out and said, I haven't seen it yet, but it has made more money in the first month than four of the top five Best Picture nominees added together. Now it's made more money. It's made $53 million worldwide. Since That's Jesus Revolution. The G- Jesus Revolution. It's made more money than all five of the Best Pictures for that year combined. All five of them, it's made more. It cost $13 million to make. They made $53 million. Really uh, remarkable. And here's what I can tell you. Um, I wrote another blog recently after seeing it one and a half times. I saw all of it once and then the first half again. And basically what I would say is it's got one of the most confusing, convoluted, saving messages you'd ever hear. Basically, what Mike is talking about is what you see in the movie. So just for me and our other listeners, this Lonnie Frisbee guy who obviously lived, he's dead now. Right. What role does he have in in the movie? Do they like... Right. Okay. So in the movie, Chuck Smith is the pastor of this church called Calvary Chapel, which is... Not like it is today where there's hundreds of Calvary chapels around the United States. It was the Calvary Chapel, one. And he had a very small congregation. Based on the movie, it looked like it was about 25 or 30 people. Very kind of dead congregation. Well, this is when the hippie revolution was all taking place. And Chuck Smith and his wife were talking, and they had a daughter that was like college age, and she was getting ready, two daughters, but one of them was getting ready to go out the door. And he was talking about the fact that he didn't get these hippies, that they were a, a scourge, they were terrible. And she said, maybe you should get to know them. And he said, look, 
If God brings me a hippie, then I'll try to get to know him. So his daughter, the one that's college age, is driving down the road one day, and there's this guy walking alongside the road with a long outfit on and a picture of Jesus on the back, and he's got a stick, and he's walking with a walking stick. She pulls over, picks him up. His name is Lonnie Frisbee. Ah. They spend all night talking. And come the next morning, the dad's up in arms. Here's this dirty, bearded, hippie guy with beads and things and a long outfit and a long beard. And they get to talking, and the guy talks about Jesus, and the guy talks about how he loves Jesus, and he's a follower of Jesus. And, you know, that the people in the hippie revolution are really seeking after God. They're just doing it the wrong way. They're taking psychedelic drugs and getting involved in sex and things in an odd quest trying to find God. Yes, you, I do remember the Jesus movement, the Jesus people, the like even the videos of Woodstock, which is about right. this time. Right. Uh, Woodstock was 1969. Right. And according to Mike, he heard him in 69. Right. So, now, the actor that plays him is a guy named Jonathan Rumi, and he played Lonnie Frisbee. That plays Frisbee. Lonnie Frisbee, yeah. Uh-huh. And he also plays Jesus in the series called The Chosen. And so this Jonathan Rumi is a very good actor and does a good job. But basically, the saving message he gives is something along the lines of turn from your sins Invite Jesus into your heart and give him control of your life. That's what you see in the movie when Greg Laurie is being baptized by Lonnie Frisbee. He leads him in a sinner's prayer where he confesses he's a sinner, he turns from his sins, and then he invites Jesus into his life to be his Lord and Savior. And that's the basic message through the movie. And by the way, notice when Mike talks about what he heard in 1969, there's nothing about believing in Jesus. Right. In fact, in the movie, you're not hearing that the way you're born again is believing anything, believing in Jesus or whatever. It's, you know, commitment of your life, turning from your sins, giving him control. What did Mike say? He said, you've got to. uh, Well, he says here, and this is in quotes uh, that Lonnie Frisbee says, I need you to stand up, walk forward, come up here on stage and receive the Holy Spirit, and then later, Frisbee says, you need to give up sinning if you want to be saved. So let me tell you, well, a couple more things about Lonnie Frisbee, and I'll tell you my own experience. The movie ends by showing pictures of Chuck Smith back then and saying when he died, Lonnie Frisbee back then, the real Lonnie Frisbee, and saying that he died in 1993 with no explanation because In 93, he would have been around 50, which, you know, that's a bit young. Why did he die? And then they talk about Greg Laurie and show pictures of him then and pictures of him now and say that Harvest Church is one of the biggest in California and his, I don't think they mentioned his Harvest Crusades, but he has these evangelistic crusades that are Lordship Salvation and they're big and popular. But anyway, Lonnie Frisbee died of AIDS in 1993. And you can find articles online that will explain why the movie doesn't mention it. But it turns out that the movie says he and his wife went to Florida and left Calvary Chapel and went to Florida. But it doesn't say that they got a divorce. And they did. And he later went into homosexuality and died of AIDS. So Lonnie Frisbee is not a poster child for someone who perseveres who faithful the- and persevered to the end. Um, But was Lonnie Frisbee born again? I don't know. There's no indication in the movie that he ever knew he had everlasting life simply by faith in Jesus, but hopefully he did. I don't know. So Uh, he may have spent his whole life, at least in his whole life as a a quote-unquote believer, believing he had to persevere, believing he had to do good works. He might have. Right. I don't know. know. Right. But in 1972, September of 72, I came to faith in Christ during the Jesus movement, the Jesus revolution. I was going to college at University of California, Irvine, which is a few miles from Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa. And so I went on Saturday nights for I don't know how many times, four, five, six times to this huge tent. Now, they show a tent in the movie, but the tent in the show looks like it holds maybe 500 people. I was in a tent that held maybe 4,000 people. 
And we heard Love Song sing, which is in the movie. I think Larry Norman. And I did heard you Ch- hear? Did you hear Lonnie speak? No, I right. don't recall that. But I recall hearing Chuck Smith speak. Right now, I don't know if Lonnie was still there in '72 or not. This was late '72. Would have been like October, November of '72. But my point is, I heard all these things, and I liked the music and everything, but I wasn't attracted to the charismatic elements that were a part of Calvary Chapel. Well, let me just jump in right there. I didn't read this on Mike's question. He said that he's read that Frisbee and the others within that movement came under the Signs and Wonders movement. And they so did. so this movement then is a mixture of signs and wonders and a works-based salvation. Yeah. In the movie, you see some of that. And the movie ends with saying he helped found the Vineyard Movement with Wimber, et cetera. And the Vineyard Movement was part of the signs and wonders movement. So I guess I'm saying about all this that the Jesus revolution or the Jesus movement, or we called ourselves Jesus people, were a very broad mix of people that would go everywhere from free grace to believing that we're born again simply by faith in Christ apart from works, that was what I believed, to what Lonnie Frisbee was teaching. But it sounds like this church and what they were preaching was definitely a works-based gospel. I would say that Chuck Smith, from what I've heard since then, etc., He was not uh, fully into the charismatic. I think he tried to put the brakes on that. Oh, wow. Uh, And not all Calvary chapels by far are charismatic. A lot of them aren't. And some Calvary chapels, the pastor will preach eternal security and some won't. Wow. So today that movement is very diverse, just like the Jesus movement was very diverse. So we all agreed there's one way. We used to drive down the road, we'd put our finger out one way, and they have that in the movie. We'd have bumper stickers that said one way. We all knew there was only one way to get to heaven, and it was Jesus. The problem was there were a lot of different answers on what you had to do to get Jesus to take you to heaven. (laughs) Well, with his gospel presentation, it's pretty clear that Lonnie Frisbee, at least when he was involved in it, was very confused about the condition there. Right. And that's sad. Well, thank you, Mike, for this question. And and Bob, thank you for that historical walk through what it was like back there in the early 70s. And we hope this answers your question, Mike. And for those interested in watching this on Netflix or wherever, Jesus Revolution. And remember, keep keep grace grace in focus. There are a lot of costs involved in staying on the air. That's why we so much appreciate our financial partners. If you'd like to learn how to become one, you can find out more by going to faithalone.org. We would love to hear from you. Maybe you've got a question, comment, or some feedback. If you do, please don't hesitate to send us a message. Here's our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On the next episode, we look at the question, Is Faith a Choice? Which comes first, faith or regeneration? We hope you can join us, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.